What's up divas and what's up divas? It's your girl April and as you guys know it is Wednesday so it is Real Talk Wednesday and I am here to do a video with scarf on and all. So you guys ever have that feeling or just you just be in that mood where you don't really want to get dressed, you don't really want to put your hair on, you really don't even want to put makeup on but I've done that because I've done videos today but I've just been lazy today. Not even lazy but I've been busy. So after my videos, I took off the wigs, I relaxed, and I really don't feel like putting a wig on for a video, just for real talk. I really didn't feel like doing that. So be real about it and just come on with your scarf on, and that's what I'm doing today. At least I got it like tied nicely. It's not like some dirty, raggedy scarf where I, you know, look like, girl, why are you coming on on camera looking like that? At least I got my makeup on and my scarf is tied neatly. So other than that, that is the reason. And plus, I had too many pineapple upside down drinks. Yes, in the early afternoon, I had a couple of drinks. So kind of like laid me out on my ass. I had to take a little 20-minute nap to revive myself. But yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. So... <laughs> If you want a real talk episode about your life or your situation, you need some advice from me and the divas and divos here on the YT, make sure you go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com and make sure to please put in the subject line real talk. If you want to change the name of your character meeting yourself, so if your name was Susan, but you don't want to go by Susan in this video, you can call yourself whatever you want under the sun. You can go ahead and let me know that you changed the name. That way I don't have to think too hard because I already got to think about what I'm going to advice I'm going to give. So, other than that, let's get on to the real talk. Okay, y'all? April, I must say first off, I love your real talk. It's one of those things that re relieves me of stress wherever, whenever I watch. Usually when I watch, I agree with the advice you give. So of course I had to ask you for some advice of my own. You can call me Aerie. I am 20 years old and live in NYC. Now as a fellow former New Yorker, you know the struggle is absolutely real out here. I still live at home with my mother, father, sister, her husband, and my brother. I want to start off by saying I have problem at all. I want to start off by saying I have problems at all working. I was, oh, I don't have a problem at all for working. I was never one of those prissy little spoiled girls everyone in my generation seems to be. I somehow missed that boat. <laughs> Laugh out loud. So did I, girl. Anyways, I just had to quit my overnight stock job due to illness. Long story short, working there made me develop a respiratory illness. I went, I want very badly to help my parents out and pull my weight, but at the same time, I feel like I'm at cross, I'm at a crossroads. Working at certain places since I, since I was 18, I always came across people who were in the same position as me, only years and years older. And what they would always tell me is that, try not to end up like them. Needless to say, that scared me, especially now that it seems like all my counterparts are doing all of these great things and traveling abroad and living life. I do have dreams and aspirations, but sometimes I feel stuck because I'm not sure of how to reach them. With all this being said, I want to ask you, should I try and be realistic and find a good job that I can maybe grow in or go all out and try to go after that I feel I'm talented in? Beauty, music, writing, things people tend to struggle in even if they don't go about it the right way. I feel like such a helpless artist stuck in the Bronx. Thank you so much for reading, Aerie. Hmm. So basically, Aerie is a 20-year-old who lives in NYC and she is definitely right it is a struggle out in New York City because it's expensive um, she lives at home with her parents her brother and her sister and her sister's husband and she's always worked so she's not one of those prissy types like she said that feel like she doesn't have to do anything she, you know basically everything's handed to her she's always worked but due to an illness she has a respiratory illness she can't work right now but she would like to know should she go and achieve and try hard to work for work in a field where she feels comfortable and talented and where it will benefit her opposed to just working some you know dead end job so airy you basically answered your own question why wouldn't you want to work somewhere where you feel comfortable 
you feel like your skills are put to use, you're challenged, you're making a great income, but you feel rewarded at the end of the day instead of a dead-end job. Dead-end jobs are better than no job, and I will give you that much, and I'll give that to everybody because we can't always come across that job that we want in life. We can't always get handed a spoon. We can't always get handed that job that says, hey, you know what? You're going to work for one of these five, 500 fortune companies or what have you. You're going to make it. It doesn't work like that in the real world. Sometimes we got to start off little by little by little, and then we get to where we really need to be. And that happened with me. You know, I started off working at Burger King, then I worked at Family family dollar and where else did I work I worked at a telemarketing spot um, and I became administrator assistant at this telemarketing spot after like six months which was great because that's where it started me moving up then I became a administrator assistant for a um, property management company and then also for like foreclosure homes so then I also became administrative assistant for a pharmacy company. So and then I went to work for Fidelis New York and I became senior VP for marketing and healthcare for nine years. So I started off working at Burger King and then Family Dollar. You never thought that working at Burger King I was gonna work and become a senior VP for marketing and healthcare. So that wasn't my goal. I never seen myself working in healthcare. I always wanted to be a designer. I wanted to do fashion and that was my thing. But that was when I was younger. And then as I got older, I said, I just want to work in human services to where I can help people and just help better their lives. So my job at Fidelis was somewhat like that. It was kind of in that same field, but a little bit different, but I still was able to help people and get them health insurance and give them, help them with their needs. So I loved that job so much. I had it for nine years and unfortunately I got fired. Um, so happened to be, I got fired and they hired two people to take my spot. And it was basically because I didn't want to become a supervisor. I rather had stayed as a marketing VP. And I was good at what I did. And they was complaining a lot about my, my pay wage. So they fired me and I was glad. It was time to go. Sometimes after nine years, things just don't work out. And I became so stressed out when I, work, when I would come home. Sometimes I would cry, like on a daily basis. And nobody wants to work at a job where you feel so unwanted and so uncomfortable and miserable at the end of the day that you don't even want to go. Like nobody wants to work at a place like that. I want to work somewhere where I'm happy to go to work. I don't really think that there's too many people that get up in the morning at whatever time they get up and be like, oh, yes, girl, it's 6 o'clock. I'm about to go to work. Don't nobody feel like that. I, there might be some people that feel that way, but I really don't think that there's a whole hell of a lot of us that feel that way. So, Ari, of course, you're still young. You're 20 years old. I'm just checking out my makeup here. You're 20 years old. So you got a long lifespan ahead of you, and why not go for what you want? Later on in life, it's going to benefit you, and you're going to be happy. You're going to reap the benefits, okay? But not only that, you are going to be happy. It is always good to be able to get up in the morning, even though we're tired, and go somewhere where we feel comfortable and happy. It's bad when you go to a job that you really don't want to go to in the morning because that just fucks up your whole mood for the day, especially in the morning. You dragging out of bed, you reluctant to go, you want to call in, you really don't want to be there. And throughout the entire day, you're like, I do not want to be there. What time is it? Is it time to go yet? Because I don't want to be here. But finding a job that you really enjoy and you like, that benefits you and is able to allow you to show off your skills and enhance your skills and better yourself is the best environment. So I'm all for it. Writing is a special skill and a very talented skill. And I say whatever your hopes and dreams and aspirations are, that you go out and you seek them. Me, I, I enjoy what I do now. Um, you know what I'm saying? I work from home and I enjoy it because it allows me to have time with my kids. And when I say I work from home, meaning I have my own business. I don't work for anybody. I have my own business and I work from home. And I enjoy it because I'm able to spend time with my kids. I'm able to get my kids. I'm able to do certain things. So this is what I enjoy doing. But, you know what I'm saying, I've done it all. You know what I'm saying, I've done it all. However, I encourage you to go out. And in the meantime, while you're seeking employment or that type of employment, sometimes jobs like you may want may require you to further your education in life, okay? So if you need to further your education, 
I would take a part-time job. So that way, you're still living at home, but you're able to financially help your parents out and also help yourself out, okay? You're not walking around broke going to school or waiting for that good job to come through. So, yeah, a dead-end job is better than no job because some people ain't even got no job and they have no aspirations, dreams, goals, or any type of, you know, motivation. And that's sad to say. And then some people just can't go to work. And those people that just can't go to work, some of them really do wish that they can get out the house every day. And sometimes I used to feel like that too when I used to work for Amazon from home. I used to feel like, damn, I don't want to be here. I'm stuck in this house all day long. I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything because I'm always on the phone talking to customers and I just can't take it. So I used to feel like that too. But I think that whatever type of goal or dream or career that you're seeking, that you go for it. Because when you get my age, you don't want to think about it and say, you know what, I should have did that then. Now look at me. Am I too old to go back to school? Am I too old to further my education? Am I too old? You don't never want to be like should have, could have, would have. You never want to feel like that. At least try and give it your best shot. So that way you can't ever say, oh, damn, I should have did this at my earlier age. Now I can't do it because, you know, I'm far behind and my skills are not worthy. You know what I'm saying? So give it a shot and give it your best damn shot. And sometimes these, these jobs, like I said, require a little bit further education. And if you need to do that, then do that and get yourself a part-time job. But never give up on your goals and dreams. You know what I'm saying? They're called goals for a reason. And they're called dreams for a reason too. Some people call them dreams and that's all they do is dream about them. Some people call them dreams and they reach those dreams and they make them a reality. So feel like this a reality and make that dream your reality and do what you feel is best. Because in the long run, even if you don't succeed at what you wanted to do, at least you tried and you feel good inside that you gave it a shot. You... You can't kick yourself in the ass for not trying. You know what I'm saying? At least you tried. You could always look back and say, you know what? I gave that my best damn shot, and I'm proud of myself for that. And now I'm going to move on to the next. So there's nothing wrong with goals and motivation and seeking a better career. You're better at yourself and your family. So why not? I'm all for it. I'm all for it. So let Ari know what you guys think about that. What would you do if you had goals and careers that you wanted to get into, but you weren't quite there yet? What would you do? Would you stick at that um, dead-end job and just keep on working there and being miserable? Or would you stick it out at the dead-end job and continue striving for your real career move? Hello, April. My name is... I'm going to change her name because I see her name is matching her email. We're going to call her Tina. My name is Tina and I'm a huge fan. I love your videos and the fact you keep it so real. I need your advice about something. I've been married to the man of my dreams for about a year and a half and we've been together a little over two years. We also have a one-year-old daughter, his first child and my second. Everything between us happened so fast and never got to know my husband the way I should have. I give my husband lots of privacy, but just so happened I went through my husband's phone and saw he was, well, was on a dating website and asked a woman if he could come over and eat her. I called her and she said they never did anything and after she told him no, he was very rude to her. I confronted him and he lied about it at first and then he came clean. He told me he wanted to feel like he still had it. He apologized a million times, said he would go to counseling and get back in church, basically do anything to keep our family together. I'm so lost, April, I don't know what to do. I have these thoughts in the back of my head would he have cheated if she said yes? Has he already cheated? I can't eat. I can't sleep. I'm so confused. Although he did not cheat physically, I feel he cheated mentally. Should I keep my family together or leave him? Please email me back and let me know. Thank you, Tina. So Tina's, they're newlyweds. And they've been married for about a year and a half. They got a baby together. That's one. They've been together for two years. She hasn't really gotten to know him. But what she did know is to find out that he'd been on a dating website and... Huh, well, let's just simply put this. Ask this lady on a dating website if, if he could eat her pussy. Because she said eat her. So I know what the hell she meant. Whew. And so he said he never... He hasn't cheated. Or he, he wants to feel like he still got it. And he's going to go back to church. First of all, Tina... It's funny that you say that because um, 
it seems like men, when they get older, they say that same thing. I just want to feel like I still had it. I didn't mean no harm by what I said to that young lady or to that woman. I didn't, I wasn't going to cheat. I just wanted to feel like I still had it. My youth, my manhood. I just wanted to feel like I still had it going on. You know what I mean? That nigga would have ate her fucking pussy if she would have allowed him to, okay? Because, for, first of all, he ain't going to write that shit if he really didn't mean it, all right? Now, as far as you keeping your family together and leaving him, that's a hard one to swallow, okay? I'm glad you called her and you called him out on it. Now he wants to go to church and he wants to do this, go to counseling. These are, those words are basic words with, that come out of people's mouths when they lie. I'm going to go to counseling or I'm going to go to church. I'm going to seek help because I want to stay together with you. These are basic words, and I say they're basic words because he ain't the only motherfucker that said that shit. I've heard that from my ex-husband. We're going to go to counseling, and we should go to church. We, should, we, he and I, should go to church. Nigga, ain't nothing wrong with me. It's you. I don't need to go to counseling. I don't need to go to church. I believe in the Lord. I need you to get your shit together, okay? That's what I need. So these are basic things that they say to appease you and to try to get you on their side and to basically tolerate their bullshit and their nonsense and to get you good back in their good graces or you to or get good in your good graces or back in your good graces, rather. So they're trying to get you back in your good graces, but also to appease you, make you happy, make you put up with the bullshit, make you understanding, let you feel sympathetic to them and, and feel like oh he really is trying girl please okay if you are seeking out women on the internet and she said no to your offerings of pussy eating what about the next bitch that ain't gonna say no okay because i'm pretty sure she's not the only one that he's asked okay it's a dating website and if it was pof or plenty of fish because i know it ain't no damn eHarmony or what's the other one match.us or some shit like that it was probably that pof plenty of fish bullshit okay one of those dating websites okay where some of them raunchy chicks on there will go for it yeah come on over we could get it popping okay so this one he may come across one that is just ain't up for all of that but the next one or the one prior to her might just be into that and may just be on come up or hard come up and want a piece of the action so he might not have got a chance to eat her pie but who's to say that she's not the only one that he's asked i'm in my feelings i'm feeling like she's not the only one that he's asked and for him to be told no by this lady and then after she told him no he became so irate and rude with her. He really did want to eat her. So don't let him tell you, oh, I, didn't, I wasn't going to do that. I just wanted to see if I still got it. If that's the case, if you wanted to see if you still had it, what you getting mad for because the girl told you, no, you can't eat my pussy? What you getting mad for? I don't really see too many men out there getting really upset about oh, someone telling them, no, you can't go down there. All right? Unless they really is a nympho for eating the stuff. Okay? I don't really know too many. Well, I don't really go around asking neither. But he got upset for a reason. Maybe he still ain't got it and he ain't got it going on no more. Or maybe he really wanted to, but she was not feeling him like that. So who knows what his agenda was, why his feelings was hurt. Because he got rude and irate with her because his feelings was hurt. Because his manhood was hurt. That's the reason behind this. If he wanted to see like he still got it, he wouldn't have been upset about her telling him no. He would have just brushed it off like it was nothing and went about his business. But he got upset. That's why he got rude and nasty with her. So there's something more behind it. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, should you leave your family? What I would do if I was your girlfriend is I would investigate. I would really investigate his ass. Because you're right. You really didn't know him. See, I've been together all together with the marriage and all for two years. That's really not enough time to know somebody because y'all been married for a year and a half. So, you've been married for a year and a half, meaning you knew him for six months before you married him. There's nothing wrong with jumping into marriage if it's really true love. However, you really need to know the person before you marry them. Because a lot of people have hidden agendas, skeletons in their closet. And he may just have a whole bunch of fucking keys to that skeleton closet, okay? He ain't just got a closet he, or a skeleton in the closet. He got some skeleton keys to them closets, meaning he got some real bullshit behind him. 
Men go on those dating websites because they want some ass, okay? A lot of them go on there because they're just trying to get some easy ass. And that's just the bottom line to it. And if you guys got a kid and y'all are newlyweds, then he shouldn't really be worried about getting no ass because you got some fresh newly ass at home that you've been getting every day, hopefully. And it doesn't even have to be every day. But you married that ass for some reason. There was something good about it. After six months, he married you. So should you leave your family? Y'all are newlyweds. You just got married. So I'm not up for breaking up anybody's family or happy home. And your happy home is not really happy right now. But I would suggest that you do some real investigation. You ain't got to go through his shit like that. But I would keep an eye out and watch him. Just like, you know, really, really watch his moves. Check out his body language. See how he reacts to certain shit. And let's see, does he really want to go to counseling? Because here's the thing. What's he going to counseling for? He, you didn't say he had a drug problem or a sex problem. He's not an alcoholic. So what's he going to counsel for? For dating websites? Because I've never heard of that one. Or is it because he's trying to keep you in his... In your, he's just trying to keep you. It's basically what he's doing. And like I said, that's a basic fucking answer. Counseling, church, all of this shit. So basic. I've heard that shit so many times. It's ridiculous. And it's so basic to where it's not even sincere. Okay? It ain't even sincere. But I tell you what, Tina... Come across some neck shit, his ass will be out the fucking door. Goodbye. See you later. And then again, I would investigate that dating website. Look at his profile. See how many people he's contacted. Okay? What's his profile say? What's his Facebook profile say? Does it say single, married? These are the things you do. Because you can ask him all day until you're blue in the face and he's blue in the face. Is he cheating on you? Do you really think he's going to come out and say, yeah, girl, I'm cheating on you. I sure am cheating on you, baby. With every bitch on the internet and every bitch at my job and walking, I'm cheating on you. That's right. They're not going to tell you cheating on him. So you're wasting your breath asking a nigga if he's cheating on you. For real. Don't be dumbfounded. Be smart about your shit. And if you feel like he's cheating on you mentally and you can't eat and you can't sleep, so then there's an issue. That's fucking with your shit. That's fucking with you mentally. Okay? I ain't about to stop sleeping and eating for no motherfucking body, alright? Though I could use to lose a few pounds, okay? I'm not gonna lose it for somebody stressing me the fuck out. Because I've been there and done that before. But if it's fucking with you mentally, then maybe it's time for a separation. We, we need some time apart. And sometimes some time apart is the best thing. Because if he really wants to be with you, and he really truly is involved with you, and he really truly loves you, then your separation and your time apart from him will make him become the man of your dreams. Because right now that nigga is the man of your nightmares, alright? He's like Freddy Krueger, clawing away at you, nipping at you, okay? Got you in a dream that you really want to get out of because you can't eat and you can't sleep. So if it were me, because I've, I've done this before with my ex, he's done some dumb shit too like that. Ah, his ass was gone. I kicked his ass the fuck out, okay? So wasn't nobody to give me advice. His ass was out the door. Goodbye. Pack this shit up for him. Get your shit and get the fuck out. He stayed at his mama's house. He, he went back to his mother's house. And he tried everything to get me back. And eventually we did get back together. But that was my dumb ass fault. Okay? I'm not saying be stupid like I was. And fuck with the nigga because you feel alone. Here's the thing, Tina. Everybody wants to be with somebody. Nobody wants to be alone. Everybody wants to be in a relationship. We all want to feel loved and feel appreciated and wanted. Okay? But the main key and, and thing to that is we have to be respected first. You have to respect me. If you cannot respect me, then I don't want your dirty love. I don't want you as a person. True indeed. I want to be loved. I wanted to be loved for so long and I stayed with that man. I just wanted to be loved. I wanted to be in a relationship basically. He loved me, but I wanted to have someone because I want companionship too. But it really wasn't what I was looking for with him anymore. So I just stayed because I just stayed. However, 
sometimes we jump into things that really is not a good idea and you feel like he was the man of your dreams because you see nothing but his representative in the beginning meaning he showed you someone else and now you're really truly seeing him for who he really really is okay a fucking internet pervert that's what the fuck he is because who does shit like that like if a man asks me on a dating website, can I eat you? I would be like, hold the fuck up. Whoa. But here's the thing. How long have them two been conversing with each other? He just didn't come right out and say, can I eat you? That would be really disrespectful. He worked his way into it. They had a nice long conversation. They worked up into that. You know what I'm saying? They've been talking for a minute because you got her phone number. So, therefore, he's been doing this for a minute. You know what, Tina? Tina? I'm going to rewind back to where I said I don't like to mess up anybody's happy home because your home is not happy. But I would take some time out for myself without that motherfucker around me. That's what I would do. And my do and our daughter. That's what I would do. If he really wants his family, then he'll fight for his family. But if you want to go around cheating and asking random bitches can you eat their pussy and stuff so you can come back home with mouth sores and kiss me and your daughter, boy bye. Okay? Mm-mm. Take some time out for yourself because right now you mentally fucked up. And me personally, if I was to read some shit like that, I would be livid, okay? I probably would be in handcuffs somewhere. Oh, you want to eat somebody else, pussy? What the fuck? Like, that's like an insult to womanhood. And like, who the fuck do you think you're dealing with type shit? So, yeah, I would really actually, if it were me, that nigga would be ghost. Like, goodbye. I would put him out and I need time. You ain't got to kick his ass out like that, but you just need to go to him and say, you know what? I'm going to be real about this, as real as possible, and let you know. Right now, I need some time to myself. And the shit that you did was has not made it any better. It has put me in a mental state, and right now I feel like you need to go somewhere so that I can get my thoughts and myself back together. And hopefully we can come to terms and we can meet, meet each other in the middle and we can get our family back together. But right now, I don't see that happening, and I'm really messed up behind this. This is what I would say to the dude and see what his comeback is. But honestly, in my opinion, if you want to go around eating pussy and it ain't mine, then you need to go somewhere with that, with your dirty ass mouth. You want to ask random bitches that you don't even know you meet through the internet, can you eat them? You don't, ew, like, ew, ew, ew. Yeah, take, Tina, take some time for yourself, for you and your daughter, and get your life back in order and get your feelings back. You know what I'm saying? Because it is the worst thing in the world when you feel, like, so humiliated, like, when my ex-husband cheated on me with this fat, nasty, ugly fucking bitch. Oh, she was so nasty looking. I felt like I was dewomanized, all right? I don't even know if that's a word, dewomanized. But I was like, damn, you really stooped that low? Like, it made me feel like less of a person. Like, it really made me feel less of a person. And it bothered me a lot. And it, I, I didn't get depressed, but I felt like I was ugly. And I just felt like less of a woman. So I know how you feel. And with him beating your face, it's not going to make the situation any better at all. So honestly, what I would do is I would take time for myself. And he would have to go for a while. And if you guys can work things out, then that, that's great. And if you guys can't, then things are not. It wasn't meant to be. Unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. It was a quick love affair, a love thing that you guys had because you didn't been together for two years. But sometimes you got to really investigate the person before you even go out on a first date with them. And that's all I'm going to say to that. So, let Tina know what you guys feel about her encounter with her newlywed husband asking another internet, an internet thought. That's what she is, asking an internet thought. Can he eat her out? Hmm, what would y'all do if that was y'all? Alrighty. Okay, so this one has already changed the name for me. 
Hey Miss Muffin, love your channel. You can call me CC for the purpose of the video. I am 23. I have been dating my boyfriend since I was 18. So basically we have been together for about four years now. He's 31. I am pregnant at this time. I'm having my first child, which is scary to me. I am really frustrated with this guy. I am not pushing the issue about marriage or anything, but look, I need stability in my life and he needs to let me know what it is. I am a straight to the point person. I don't like games. I don't like someone trying to deceive me. So if I am not someone you see yourself settling down with, then get to the point. Let's not waste each other's time. I went to college. I do have a degree in pharmacy. So it's not that I don't have anything to bring to the table. I don't want to find myself with this guy at the ages of 26, 27, 28, 29, and I am just a baby mama or a girlfriend, which is crazy to me. Yes, I do want a family. I want my little one to have a mom and dad around. But hey, if he doesn't make it clear for me that I am the woman he wants to make a future with, then goodbye. What should I do? Because I think, in all honesty, a guy at that age and, and, and being with someone for four years, as you should already know, what you want as a man. Don't you think, Miss Muffin? CC girl. So CC has been with somebody for four years, over four years. She was 18. Now she's 23, he's 31. She's having her first baby with him. And she's a straight to the point person. You heard the message. She wants somebody that's going to make her life stable. She ain't trying to say, let's get married tomorrow. But I, I need to know. And if you need to get to the point already. And if you're not trying to be with me like that, then let me know now so I can make moves. And goodbye. First of all, Cece is so right. She is definitely so right about that. You guys been together for four years. And you guys got a baby coming along. Y'all been together for four fucking years. You damn right, Cece. He, it's time to make a commitment. Now y'all are having a baby, okay, together. And four years is not a little bit of time, but it's long enough. It's long damn enough that y'all been together over four years and y'all got a little one coming. And you want some stability in life. And there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of women out here in the world, they don't care about no stability. They could be your baby mama for the rest of their life. They really, really don't care, okay? As long as you're giving them the dick and, and paying their bills, they fine with that, okay? A lot of people are fine with that. Me, I got a glass dildo if I ain't got a man, which I do have one, okay? But I, got, I could pay my own bills, too. But she's right. I need some stability, too, in my life. And, and she is exactly right about that. Yeah, she's got a she's got um she's she's got a college degree. She ain't bringing shit. She's bringing shit to the table, so she ain't coming in empty-handed. But she want to know what her future is. So to me, Cece, how are you approaching him about this? Because you haven't complained about him cheating, which is a good thing. But I totally understand where you're coming from. I I can totally agree with you on that. Because what are we going to be, boyfriend and girlfriend for the rest of our fucking lives? Like, let's make a commitment to one another. Are you afraid of commitment? What If it were me being with the person for four years, um, let me see. I was, I got married in 2004 and I was with my ex-husband for four and a half years. We met in 1999. So, we was together for like almost five years before we got married. Okay, so... At first, the first time we were supposed to get married, we did it, and I was really heartbroken about that, which was a year prior. So I was, I was like really pissed and heartbroken about that because, yeah, I felt like it was time for a commitment. Like we've been together for a while. So, hmm. And I'm just sitting here thinking, like, okay. So everyone, not every woman, but a lot of women who want a family life want a commitment and sometimes even if you get a commitment from that guy and they tell you oh yeah we're gonna get married they still ain't really fucking committed to you anyway they doing all kind of dumb shit behind your back so having a piece of paper that says you're married does not make everything so solidified it doesn't make life better it doesn't mean that your life is going to get greater it doesn't mean that he's not going to cheat on you so keep that in mind first off okay getting married does not mean that any of those issues go away in life because trust and believe they will still be there okay you get married and sometimes you get married to an asshole male or female and they'll end up cheating on you so marriage isn't the key it doesn't solve all problems however I can totally understand where you're coming from about commitment and wanting to be a family you guys are family now and I'm not really sure if you guys live together but what I would do honestly sometimes 
well, like with me, I approach the situation a little bit sometimes too aggressively. And that's what my family always says about me. I have no filter. I don't know how to approach people sometimes when it comes to a situation. I'm very aggressive. It's because I'm going to get right to the point with you. I'm not going to beat around the bush. It's, it is what it is, basically. I'm not trying to be rude, but it is what it is. But sometimes when we're a little bit too over-aggressive, it kind of makes a man push back because it kind of scares him away. But at the end of the day, you still want to know where do you stand in his life? What's up with me and you? Are we going to do this for the long run? And even if he tells you it's the long run and you feel it in your heart it's the long run and you guys are working hard on it and it's the long run, sometimes the long run is not really always the long run, but it sure damn feels good when it is the long run somewhere the long run. Am I making any sense? It's like basically what I'm saying is you know how we get in a relationship and they, they give us these promises and they say, yeah, I want to marry you. I want to be with you. And I want to make this a commitment. And it feels, it just feels so good to hear. You know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, the sunlight is just getting in my face. It feels so good to hear. And 10, 15 years from now, you guys have broken up, divorced. It's not what it was. But in the beginning, it just felt so real and so natural. It just felt beautiful. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to say. But what I'm also trying to say, Cece, is you have every right to want to be in a committed relationship with him because you guys are having a baby. And even if your baby was not even in 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 this discussion, if you weren't having a baby, you've still been together long enough and you want to know where you stand. And me personally, I would just come right out and say, babe, we need to have a talk. We've been together for over four years. We're having a baby. And I love you. And I want to be with you for the rest of my life. And I hope that you feel the same as I do about me. And I just need to know where do we stand. You know what I mean? What is this? Is this relationship going to go any further? Because I need to know this. I need stability in my life. And I need to know that you're going to be there for me as well as I'm going to be there for you. I need to know that we're going to be a unit and we're going to have a stable home and we're going to have a family. We're going to be a unity. I want to get married one day and I'm hoping that you are feeling the same way too. Sometimes you got to bring it to them like that. Because if you come out all aggressive like, oh, so we've been together for four years. Are you ever going to marry me? Like if you come out like, if you come out like that, he ain't going to want to answer you. I guarantee you he's not going to want to answer you if you come out to him like that. So for this type of situation, you want to approach it gently, but you still want to get your point across. Because you want to feel at the end of this conversation that you got this man over here thinking about, damn, I want to marry her. I want to put a ring on it, for real. I want to be married to her because the way she came at me. But if you come at him aggressively, he ain't trying to hear that. But I feel you on the stability and the commitment shit. Be girl please because I'll be the first one to tell you nigga goodbye because if you ain't got your shit together and you want to come in here and you want to fuck up my shit and have my house and my life all chaotic you can go you can definitely go and like with my boyfriend now he always talking about we gonna get married we gonna get married and I do want to get remarried too I do but I want to take a minute to just chill because when I say chill, not me fool around him because we live together. All right, and I love him. I wouldn't fool around him. But when I say I want to take a minute to chill because I just got divorced. So I just want to be divorced for a year before, at least before I get remarried. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to, I'm not single, but I just want to feel unmarried. I don't really know how to explain it, but I don't want to just jump into it getting married again. I just don't want to do that because I've just got divorced. And for my last situation, it was hell. So I want to make sure that this is what I really, really want before I say I do again. That's what I was trying to say about, you know, understand what I'm saying? So, and sometimes marriage is not for everyone, unfortunately. I thought I was going to be that type of person after this situation, but yeah, I'm not really not. It's a piece of paper to some, but to some people it's more than just a piece of paper, okay? And it really is more than just a piece of paper. We just need to know how to approach the situation, CC. And I'm all for you. I'm all for it. Four and a half years, baby on the way. I need to know what's going on. 
what's up with our relationship because this ain't gonna be no boyfriend girlfriend thing we having kids and kids and shit i need you to put a ring on it i need i need some commitment i need some stability and i need our relationship to be more than just a mama and daddy relationship i need more than that and if he don't want to give you that and he doesn't want to offer you that then i can totally understand you with the goodbye because girl please you could be you could do bad on your own and then you never know for you to approach him in a kind manner may just be the doors that open up for him to kick his kick himself off the ass or any ass and get off the couch or off his butt and go out and get a ring. However you approach him and if you approach him in a nice way, may open up his heart and get his mind thinking and make him feel like, you know what, she's right. But if you come at him aggressive... He ain't even going to be thinking like that. He's going to be thinking about trying to get the fuck away from you and avoid the whole marriage conversation. Okay? Those are the top topics that you need to approach nicely, non-aggressively. Be stern, but in a nice way. Ask him. Have a good sit down, good conversation with him, some wine, a nice dinner. Talk to him about it. See where his mind is at. And if he doesn't give you the answer that you want, does not mean spaz out on him. Okay? Take it as a grain of salt and let him know how you truly feel. Tell him what you told me, but tell him in a nicer way, okay? So that way he know that you ain't got no attitude because he don't want to marry you at that moment. Let him know, okay, well, listen, this is what this is what it is, bottom line. So, let CC know what you think about the situation. And as always, I hope you guys enjoy Real Talk. I will see you on my next video. Stay Diva and Divalicious and have a great night.